Hi, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach, and tonight I'm going to be stripping the paint off of this old door, doing my very best to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. First off, I want to address the comment that Bud made. The age-old saying that goes, don't try to make a silk purse from a sow's ear, ordinarily is sage, sage advice, and I really appreciate you pointing that out. In my case, however, I look around, and I've got all these sow's ears, and the silk purses, well, they ain't fallen from trees, so it's kind of what I do, man. So let's see what we can do here. On the last video on this subject, I put out the call for some advice as to how you guys would strip the paint off of this door. And man, I got a lot of advice, a lot of good advice, a lot of good suggestions. But wouldn't you know it, I also had some ideas of my own that I wanted to try out. And so I want to show you them just real quick. This won't take very much longer. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple of things real quick that might actually end up saving you some time in the long run. My first thought was, well, a bench plane, right? And all I'm trying to do is take a skim a layer off the top kind of like when you're planting down a piece of wood. So I set this guy up and check this out. Useless in this case. So then I thought maybe I'd just take the iron out and use it as a scraper, right? A nice sharp blade. That ought to be a good scraper. We'll see how that works. Works great if you got a couple of months to kill. Then I decided I'd try a steamer. Well, it's a good thing that they put that warning on there for me, huh? And check out this result. <clears throat> yeah. Undoubtedly, by now, some of you are yelling at me. Use the heat gun. Use the chemical paint stripper. Well... I'd love to, believe me, I would love to. But as it turns out, two weeks ago, my heat gun died. It died a terrible death that I couldn't even resuscitate it. I just threw it away because it wasn't worth bringing back. And the chemical paint stripper, I know it works well. Well, I think it would work well on these six layers, but I don't have any. And if you guys are watching this channel, you've probably picked up on the fact that a large part of what I'm about is is doing your best to do the job, whatever job that is, with the things that you have on hand. Yes, sometimes it's impractical. Sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes you need to go to town to go buy something. But I like to, for practice sake, if nothing else, try to do the job with what I have on hand. So, in lieu of a heat gun, I've got a heat gun. Check this out. If you do this just right, it bubbles, it bubbles, and it bubbles. Chances are very high that you're going to have some fire. So I don't know that I would recommend this on, you know, fine, fine furniture. However, for this project, I think it's just fine. You'll notice I only did about a index card size piece. And there's a reason for that. If you try to do a bigger chunk, it seems as though it cools off to the point where it's no longer gummy and it doesn't want to just come up. At least that's been my experience. So, this, this works. This works really well. And now looking at this, I'm really wishing that I had my heat gun. So for you guys out there getting ready to strip some paint, if you got a heat gun, that is numero uno priority. Heat gun and a good, decently sharp scraper. And I think we can get this done. Oh yeah, ventilation and respiration, good idea.
just like that. Bing, bang, boom. Bob's your great uncle, twice removed. While it may not be a fancy laminated maple workbench, it's pretty good for 40 bucks, don't you think? Yes, it is a veneer. Turns out that it is a veneer. So uh, I have to confess to me that it looks a little bit like a sheet of plywood. But it is solid. And uh, yeah, now it doesn't have any paint on it. The next move is to get rid of these mortises that you guys have been complaining so much about. I say that, but um, yeah, it's, it was one of the first things that I wanted to do <laughs> as well. So let's get, let's get these things gone. Shall we? One cool thing about how this bench went together is that it's going to come apart pretty easily also if I need to. In a situation such as this. Now this is probably going to seem pretty crude and somebody's bound to call me on it, but I got to do what I got to do. This is the only tool that I have to take this off right now. So, here we go. All right, that is as straight and flat as it needs to be for my purposes. However, I'm going to kind of take off the corner of it here. All right, I like it. And what do you think of that? Good enough for government work, don't you think? Granted, we still have some screw holes here. I do have some wood putty. I may just uh, fill those screw holes in with putty, but uh, there we go. Not too shabby for an old door, huh? So we're certainly not done. I still need to uh, seal it of some sort. I'm not entirely sure what to use just yet. I have some ideas. I, I want to use boiled linseed oil. Anybody's got anything pro or uh, against boiled linseed oil for uh, a woodworking workbench top, please let me know in the comments. Oh, also, somebody mentioned to me, maybe maybe more than one of you guys, has mentioned that this bench needs a skirt of some sort, a 2x8 or a 2x10 on the front of it. And while that is, you know, that would be commensurate with the look of your regular woodworking bench, I'm very hesitant to do so, and this is why. One of the things that I'm most giddy about with this workbench is the clamping ability to clamp to the front of it, anywhere. Um, you know, I think maybe I just answered my question. I think that this is not going to get a skirt, unless you guys can convince me why. Let me show you what I just thought of. My saw sharpening vise. This right here, that is not going to fit on there if I put a skirt on the front of it. Likewise, my human powered drill press is not going to fit on there if I put a skirt on the front of that. So with all that said, thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing that up. It is a good idea. Um, I think it would, uh, it would change the look of it a lot, but that clamping ability is worth too much to me. Maybe, I don't know, maybe put something on a little bit further back in there. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the process so far. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and um, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm really glad to have you around, especially if you've made it this far in this video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Take care.